Indus is my third startup. I started my entrepreneurship journey uh, in 2007. Since then, uh, I've been dedicated only in mobile field. The first startup which I did was in the mobile payment. The second was in the uh, mobile services where uh, we built almost 200 plus mobile applications. The Indus OS journey happened in 2013, which was accidental. In the sense, uh, I, along with my co-founder, we were having a cup of coffee, discussing about what's next for the company, what we should do next in terms of the... Uh, so, 2007, when I left the job, uh, idea was to, you know, build something where we can have a mass impact, but at the same time, it should not be treated as an NGO. It should be a profitable business. So, <clears throat> when we looked at the uh, problem for India, where 90% uh, of the consumers are, or consumers are not comfortable with English, so what we can build for them? That's the journey of Indus OS in, to, in 2013. We looked at US, it has its own, it has operating system. We look at China, it has its own operating system. But India, we don't have any operating system. That's what Indus is doing today. <clears throat> we started our licensing operating system in May 2015. We were very fortunate. Micromix came on board as the first OEM to license or distribute our operating system in the market. We were very surprised that, you know, Micromix con got convinced because being the number two in the market, uh, they carry a lot of, uh, you know, m uh, power in the system. And they said, we will do it on one model with you and see the response. If the response is good, we will continue the, our engagement. The first model that we launched was Unite 3. Today, in the history of Micromix, Unite 3 is the highest selling device, 1.7 million phones. And the entire promotion of this device was our USB of the operating system. For last one and a half year, almost 15, 16 months as of today, we are having more than 5 million consumer base in India. Practically all domestic players in India are using Indus operating system as the default. So when the device goes in the consumer handset, uh, consumer hand, it has the Indus OS as a default. There is no Android which consumer is using. That's the power we have in the market. Today we are 7.6% market share, number two operating system in India. So 2013, when we thought about this as an idea, uh, we looked at, uh, you know, there's a demand for uh, building something for India where language is the key. And <clears throat> 2000, when the Nokia launched first Hindi device in, in, in India. So language is something not differentiate, or language is not something new in India for, from a mobile phone perspective. So what is missing? What is uh, what the consumer need? And, uh, you know, then Samsung, Android, or, you know, there are many other mobile brands integrated the menu text in the mobile. That's how they defined you know, the phone, our phone supports 5, 10, 20 languages. When we were conceptualizing our product, we thought, you know, we are trying to get into the area where the world's biggest are operating, like of Microsoft, like of Apple, and how we will survive, or what we will do in this area. But with that, you know, assumption that, you know, no matter what will happen tomorrow, but this problem has to be solved in a more like an ecosystem approach. We are not going to build only the keyboard. We are not going to build only the app store. When the consumer is coming on internet, we want to give them the entire ecosystem approach. And with that belief, we launched first uh, language ecosystem product in year 2000 with our own hardware. Idea was to we quickly wanted to test out whether something this will work in India or not. And with our own mobile brand, with one language, Gujarati, we sold few thousand units. Idea was to, you know, we'll have a direct connect with the consumer. We'll have a more controlled geography. We will understand what the consumers are, you know, doing with the smartphone. And we kept the device price a little higher than the price of, uh, you know, local OEMs. Idea was to, you know, consumers should buy the phone because uh, it has something different in the software. After the phones were sold, about one and a half month, we called all our consumer base. 100% of them said, you know, we bought it because of the, uh, you know, differentiation, the software differentiation, what it is providing. That was a big checkpoint for us that 
what we are building for India is really in the right direction. And today, when I'm saying we have a 7.6% market share, we are ahead of uh, all these biggies, what we at one point in time thought we will never able to do it. When we look at any uh, product thinking, especially the companies who are in, who are, who has headquarters in the US, they always look at it from top to bottom approach. They always look at it from, if you already have an existing product, how they can, you know, uh, customize it for Indian market. And when you come with that as a thought process, the entire product thinking changes. For us, we, we don't have the, uh, you know, existing uh, product portfolio. We wanted to understand what the need of the consumer is, and that's how we will build it. We, we did one survey where uh, we studied consumers in 100 cities, 10,000 consumers that we spoke. Very interesting findings of this survey. On the product hardware, the biggest concern of the consumers was one, battery, second is the camera. These are the two major issues for the uh, consumer when they talk about the smartphone, uh, only the hardware. <clears throat> More than 70% 70 per 70 of our consumers said they are not happy with the current smartphone experience. They want something different. They want more, you know, simplified, because currently the way a smartphone is being designed is too cluttered, too complex to understand. When we look at the email penetration in India, for us, email is something, you know, which goes as a default in our internet life. But unfortunately, in real India, only 60% of the consumers is email address access. So that's what you know we talk about when we look, when we look at uh, you know what the real India means to us when we look at the applications. Internet. One bigger hypothesis when we started India so is that you know how many consumers has the internet connectivity when they use a smartphone. More than 80 percent of the consumers are consuming uh, using internet in India, <clears throat> but they are using in 2G. That's a bigger problem. They have a connectivity, but the connectivity is 2G. There were a lot of preference for the regional languages. 70% of the consumers wants to consume content in their native language. When we look at the audio or video consumption, it's purely, purely offline. 87% of the consumers are consuming content on mobile, but it's happening at the shop or retail level, where the guy is charging them 10 rupees per movie, and they are watching it. So if we look at all these data points and understand what the need of the consumer or, uh, you know, how as an application developer we can build applications for these, uh, you know, consumers, we have to first the sign up. Don't only restrict your sign up with the email address. It should have the email address plus mobile number or something more. But it should be beyond email address. It should be much simpler. Don't just copy with the, what is happening in the US market, because Indian consumers' understanding of smartphone digital device is very different. When you, when you design, when you make application, it should be very light, because it's still real India is on, two, in, on 2G. So we have to look at what the, you know, how we can make the application which is very, very light. Indus, when we looked at the problem for the consumer, we divided this in three pillars. The first one is we wanted to make a smartphone experience for the customer very, very simple. And this simplified experience for us is the home screen of the phone. It is the, your phone dialer, it is your messaging application. Anything and everything what you're using as a system application on the phone has to be very simplified. For example, when I have to save a contact I don't go and, uh, you know, typically when you look at Google contact, it asks you for 10, 15 fields from your, uh, you know, uh, home address to your birth date. But when I look at our consumer base, they just need a name and the number. So these are the, some of the UX we understood when we did our own research. Second is the language technology. In past, when we looked at uh, how the smartphone language ecosystem has evolved, it was only limited to phone menu text or the keyboard. Keyboards were very pathetic in condition in India because everyone was just trying to copy QWERTY experience for Indian languages. We were the first company 
who understood, you know, how we learn the languages. It was Kaka Gaga, and that kind of experience we started implementing in the keyboard. So a lot of innovations we have done in the language technology, which I will talk about in subsequent slides. The third is the content. So when uh, you know when we look at ourselves, why we love our smartphone because it gives us so much access, you know so many different type of applications access to the different kind of a content. And same is for the consumers who are coming on internet first time. They want to consume a content in their native language. And if we can give them the content in their native language, that's how the entire experience, the benefit of the smartphone, they can truly enjoy. Keyboard, as I was talking about, we have, there are two screenshots here. The first one is the native language. We are the first company in India who provides a Matra vowel prediction in, in the keyboard. We have the, another screenshot, the second one. It has the Hindi and the English word prediction. What we learn from Indian masses is that we speak two languages simultaneously. So we wanted to capture the same experience when the consumer is typing. Today, when consumer is buying the smartphone, there were two options. They can switch to the third-party keyboard, or they can continue using our keyboard. 92% of the consumers are using our keyboard. The uh, word prediction, we have almost more than 3 million word prediction capability in our keyboard today. We always talk about the digital gap in India. Uh, you know, I, I receive a bank uh, message, but it's in English, not able to understand. So what I can do? Because uh, until unless you can solve this kind of a problem for the consumer, you know, consumer can, not, can never be connected with internet. So we build the uh, swipe to translate and translated technology. The way it works is, um, if it is written, Aapka din mangal mein hai, if you do a translate, like the right swipe, the message gets translated. If you do the left swipe, the message gets translated. So this is a very powerful tool where I receive a message from the bank. With just one swipe, I can translate the message in Hindi. That's the power we give it to the consumer. Now you are not no more dependent that, you know, you, if you receive a message in Hindi, then only you can understand. We build the text-to-speech technology. It's available in eight Indian languages, offline on the device. No, with no connectivity, still consumers can use text-to-speech. It has 95% accuracy. We are the only company uh, who offers text-to-speech in Indian languages. As I was talking about the content, we have um, our own app store called App Bazaar. The uniqueness of our app store versus any app store exists in India. We don't, uh, this app store doesn't take any email address for the registration. When you click on the home uh, application icon, you directly consume the content. We host more than 35,000 applications, including some of the uh, giants like the Facebook or the WhatsApp to a lot of regional developers. So it's a mix of both kind of content is available. We also work with the developers to you know, discount the content. So for example, if it is, say, $1, in our app store, it is available at 5 rupees or 10 rupees. And we also offer consumers to pay from their you know, prepaid or the postpaid account, from the carrier billing that is being already indicated. When we uh, build the, all the technology, everything, so what's the impact? As I was talking about the simplified experience that we have built, 98% of the consumers prefer to use Indus experience over the stock Android experience. We have also built uh, system applications where 55% of the initiation is happening from the home screen. In terms of our geography presence, we are in 24 states in India today. This swipe, which, was, which I was talking about, the bridging digital gap, when we started in uh, May 2015, it was available only the messaging application, SMS app. We were seeing almost six to seven swipes per user per day. Uh, four months back, we implemented this in WhatsApp. So uh, if I'm communicating with someone, I can uh, translate uh, the English message in my native language. Today, the swipe is like 100 swipes per user per day. That's the kind of adoption we are seeing now. 
App Store, 25% of the consumers are consuming content only through our App Store. When, uh, you know, Indus OS has the Google Play Store as well, but 25% of the consumers are only consuming through our App Store. 15 million downloads. On an average, we are seeing, uh, you know, consumers are downloading between 5 to 10 applications. And we are driving 30% of the content consumption more than the average data consumption in India. Some of the learnings for all of us from the our one and a half year of journey. Your product should be very, very simple for the consumer. It should be more focused towards who is your target audience. And don't go with the approach of you have to build more and more features. It has to be in a way where with less, exp uh, you know, less features, but core experience, that's how you can build the applications for the consumers uh, who are you know, less technology savvy or uh, they are you know, using a smartphone first time. When we look at the consumers in India, uh, there's a, when Facebook does a very interesting experiment, there were 2G Tuesday, where they give the consumer, uh, where they give the developer one hour where you will use Facebook with 2G network, so that they can, so that you can understand what are the challenges uh, you know users are facing when they when you look at uh, you know emerging markets like India. So that's how you know you have to look at your consumer base. Don't think from where, if you are using an iPhone or you are using OnePlus. Look at it more from the consumers who are using 5,000 rupees device. Go more closer. Don't just look at what consumer is saying. Also watch the customer. Because uh, it's not just about what they are saying. Sometimes they are not able to explain themselves. So it is very critical that we understand the user behavior, um, you know, watching them. As I was talking about, you know, Indus OS journey, uh, they, we, we are the competitors the, of the biggest in the world. If you believe that there is an opportunity exist, even though there is a big guy against you, but if the opportunity is there where you believe that, yes, you can deliver the product, and if you uh, just go with you know, your uh, belief, you, know, you can really crack it. That's what the success of Indus OS today. Just go knock out. Thank you.